Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, relax, and let's talk about RVs. Hello everyone, this is Rob from RV Talk Radio. Great to talk to you again. This is episode 82. And this episode, we're going to talk about when you know you're a real RVer. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Well, hopefully this will be kind of a humorous show because uh, uh, especially when like Sherry and I had a chance to step back from the RV world a little bit. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about some of the things we're thinking about doing um, with our RV. But uh, I wanted to make some observations because once you kind of stepped out a little bit and you kind of like clear your head a little bit of RVing and then you continue watching RV shows and stuff like that, then you realize <laughs> the humor in some of it. So like I was watching uh, the Family Atlas, tra uh, Travel Atlas group and she's doing a video on uh, Facebook and she's got a septic tank hose or black tank hose or septic hose around her neck doing a presentation like for a free giveaway and you know um i i guess uh, this would be kind of like a jeff foxworthy kind of thing you know you're a real rver when you're getting excited about a new septic hose and really when you get accepted about a new holding tank <laughs> for your black tank when you go boondocking that is a true sign that you're uh, becoming a real RVer. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of other things here, so let me mention a few more. Have you ever noticed when you look through your pictures on your phone that you have more pictures of your RV or trailer or motorhome uh, than you do of your partner <laughs> or your kids? <laughs> you know that you're becoming an RVer when you are uh, uh, got like uh, 50 different angles of your RV in different locations that you're at. It's the same RV. The RV hasn't changed a bit. The background's a little different. Uh, sometimes uh, the RV parks all look the same anyway. But yeah, you know that you've been RVing a long time when you got all these pictures of your RV. And, and of course, when you show people, they're going, yeah, that's great, Fred. <laughs> and uh, of course, if you've really been RVing for a long time, or uh, especially if you're traveling, you will probably start noticing in your wallet um, that you're starting to get more cards for RV membership discounts than anything. Let's see, uh, let me guess what is in my wallet. I've got a Good Sam. Uh, there is Passport America card. I've got uh, Escapers, Escapees, uh, Thousand Trails, and I uh, think that's all I have. Uh, I think I got some other miscellaneous things, but yeah, uh, pretty soon you can't even close your wallet because you got all these memberships. So you pretty much uh, can start concluding that you're becoming a real RVer when you have all these membership cards and discount cards. I think the other thing I really notice, especially when you're full timing, is it's amazing that some people uh, that are RVing, and I, I think it's uh, well, not necessarily, but some of the ones that will go to one location for three to four months, especially like snowbirds, it's amazing what they pull out of their RV to kind of give their RV site a little bit of a homey feeling. Like, I think the most amazing one I've seen is, if you ever seen the little propane uh, heaters that are real tall and they have glass in them and you can see the fire shoot up, there's one couple I saw that had two, not one, but two of those and a complete um, kind of like yard set. And all I can ask myself is, how did they carry that stuff? And of course, and then there's others that put up these little bird feeders into the ground for their hummingbirds, and then these little decorative things, and then little flags, and wind socks. And once again, I ask myself, where do they fit this stuff? It, it's amazing what they can carry. Um, I've seen full-size barbecues 
uh, Traegers, like the Traeger that we always talk about, uh, there's a portable version of it. That's not exactly the smallest thing in the world. Um, but yeah, you got to give yourself a, um, a star saying, I'm a true RVer when you can carry that much stuff, get to your location and turn your RV spot into a personal kind of layout that uh, people walk by going, woo. And, uh, and, and the other thing you know uh, that you've been an RVer too long is when you literally have Christmas lights set up for your RV. <laughs> Now I've seen like the lights for the the uh, patios and stuff and the little uh, LED strips and stuff, but there's some people have got full blown decorative layouts for their RV during Christmas. <laughs> of course, they start at Thanksgiving, and that's truly amazing too. And I can't help but notice a handful of RVers that have three or four dogs. Usually they're smaller ones, but I've seen people with um, two, sometimes three mid-size or full-size dogs. And yes, I've definitely seen RVers with Great Danes. Uh, that's amazing. <laughs> I don't know if that really qualifies to say, hey, you're a real RVer when you have that many dogs. or And, and not to mention, a lot of those people already have all those dogs have a cat or two or three <laughs> so, anyway I can just imagine uh, that there's no room in their RV to move around for all the dog dishes and uh, litter boxes but uh, um, yeah it gets truly amazing the other thing I also noticed about true RVers is uh, some of them have got these elaborate little fence things for their pets and depending where you go, some places won't let you have them. But other places, like down here in Arizona, because there isn't grass, you tend to see a lot of those. And some of them get pretty elaborate. <laughs> it's so, I like, how do you care? I mean, those aren't exactly small, the little pieces of fencing that people use. So once again, you know you're a true RVer when you can master the art of carrying all this stuff and getting from place to place. Now I know another couple that are full timers and we went to go visit them and what I couldn't believe is how many tote boxes they took out of their RV and they placed them underneath the RV and we're I'm not talking like three or four. I'm talking about 10 to 15 tote boxes of stuff and and so and and then and these, some of these people make videos and they'll talk about how to be a minimalist. And I was like, uh, have you seen all the tote boxes that are on your RV? <laughs> and you're calling yourself a minimalist? <laughs> anyway, you know you've mastered the art of RVing when you can carry that much stuff in tote boxes. But I can guarantee you while you're traveling, you're probably not uh, utilizing your RV too much with all those boxes in there. But yeah, there is an art of uh, carrying all your stuff. And if you want to you know, carry all that, and, and, and uh, it's a lot of work. <laughs> and I've seen people pull up, and it takes them a half hour just to get all the boxes out of their RV to put under their RV so they can start getting set up. So it's kind of funny. So yeah, I'm sure that all you guys could think of some other things that are quite elaborate, especially like a how people lay out all their um, yard furniture and carpeting. Oh my gosh, I've never seen so many different types of carpets that people put out inside their RVs and their flags and wind socks and bird feeders and um, et cetera. But uh, those are true signs that you're becoming a real RVer. There's no doubt. So anyway, those are kind of enjoyable stories, enjoyable things that we see. I'm sure there's a lot more and we uh, urge you in the comments to tell us some of the stories that you feel that uh, start kind of telling you that you're becoming a real RVer. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> shoot us a note, put comments in the uh, videos or the podcast. We'd love to hear from you. Last weekend, we had the wonderful opportunity to meet Mark and Jody Shetler. I think I said their name right. And very, very nice couple. And uh, they were over at... Um, Lost Dutchman State Park, which is in Arizona, right on the Tonto National Forest uh, 
border uh, where you can see the Superstition Mountains. A uh, beautiful area. Uh, I mean, just gorgeous. And what's really nice about that park is that I noticed there was a lot of spacing between each place the, um, or each space, RV space. And, and it's for camping too. So um, there was a handful of uh, spaces that had water and electric. Uh, there was no septic. And but still, I just great place to go. Uh, and boy, I mean, it was even in what uh, this is a March and it was pretty full. And so, yeah, busy little place. Anyway, so we got to change. Um, we met Mark and Jody actually last year on the uh, fr from the show on um, the RV Talk Radio, and they were actually one of the winners of uh, RV Lock. And um, actually, kind of forgot about that uh, when we saw them, but. Um, and the other thing, I had a heck of a time trying to remember Jody's name, which is, I kept wanting to say Judy, and I'm so sorry. Anyway, but uh, it's it's getting kind of um, uh, burned in now, so I got it right, Jody. Anyway, uh, nice couple. They're from the New York area, and they uh, were in contact with us during the, before they actually bought their RV. They have a beautiful big country RV from Heartland. I think he was saying it was over, like 40 foot. <laughs> it's got five slides. It's a monster. And they gave us a tour of their thing. It was really neat because they had, just like us, the rear entertainment. And they're just like us. We really like the rear entertainment in our fifth wheel because um, you can kind of see the television from all perspectives of the RV. And so um, uh, they didn't have a back window. Um, like we do, but um, in return, they got much more, much more uh, storage cabinetry in the back. Uh, so yeah, it was a great rig, and I was really curious. And you guys might know this, and I'd love to see it in the comments. But uh, one of the things in our Montana we really enjoy is is we have you know four slides, and they have five. And we were talking about something. Oh, I think we we're talking about um staying at Walmarts and trying not to put our slides out. So I always told them uh, when, when we did that, we'd put the slide out for the bedroom and the slide out for the kitchen and a little bit of the back. We're trying not to get them all out um, so we can just at least maneuver around a little bit. And so we have little control knobs that allows us to shut off certain slides. And he said, well, I can't do that. This is one button opens them all, except one, their bedroom one is electric and it's on its own. And But the other four come out hydraulically like mine. And so we were kind of looking at his setup and there was a, a, a device down in his, where you would normally have your generator um, that shows four hydraulic hoses coming into these little flat things um, and uh, but they weren't switches or anything like mine but it seems like that they would have some ability to shut on and off the different slides so I'd be really curious for those of you who may have a big country uh, fifth wheel uh, can you shut off any of your slides and only open up certain slides. Uh, I'd be curious of how you did that and how you do that and leave me uh, uh, information in the comments and I'll pass it on to Mark and Judy Shuttler. And by the way, they have some great uh, websites. One is uh, Mark has his uh, uh, own website. Let's see, I got it written down here somewhere. Uh, it's bobbleheadtravelers.com and she does pet portraits and so if you get a chance to see her website hers is jody-art.com and both of those sites are great sites anyway but if uh, uh, it's something uh, for her is something that she really enjoys doing and does it uh, not full time all the time but uh, it, she, it's kind of nice that she just takes on a few clients and she can really do nice detailed work so if you like to get a pet portrait uh, contact Jody and uh, Mark uh, make sure you check out his website it's uh, his blog or vlog and yeah 
He's done a really good job with that. So I want to thank those two for the great hospitality of having me and Sherry over. And uh, we really enjoyed spending the day with them. And uh, they're really fine people. So anyway, and they've been loyal listeners for a long time. So we appreciate it. Well, there's definitely something that you need to know once you become an RVer, and especially if you've been RVing, and especially if you've been full-timing and maybe came off the road, you will know this as well as me and Sherry. You will always have a wonderless um, lifestyle. And no matter where you're at, you'll uh, even like Sherry and I, We, uh, you guys say, well, yeah, they, uh, they bought a house. They're not RVers anymore. Well, no. Nah. Once you done the traveling thing you never get it out of your blood it's there forever and it will constantly haunt you and if you don't um, address it and don't um, <coughs> realize that you have that uh, you could be kind of miserable so here's the dilemma Sherry and I are up with is now we now that we have a house again we still know that you know once the honeymoon's over we'll start getting that little itch to go travel. But for sure, we know that the RV we have now is now too big. Uh, it's designed for full timing, in which that's what we were doing. But And it's not one of those rigs that you just kind of will drive on up and hook up and just off we go because we have uh, a dually and we keep a canopy on it and, and um, it's, it, it's not, you know, we're not going to be able to go like... Uh, like uh, state parks and stuff like that because it's just too monstrous. Uh, it's a 3625 uh, RE Montana 2013 and um, it's really more like 40 foot when you really measure it and so yeah it's a monster. So Sherry and I are now kind of starting that discussion of like what are we going to do with the RV and this is the same conversation I think the Higgins had to go through. But we're going to face the reality that we're going to still have this wonderlist kind of lifestyle in our heads. And we'll probably still want to travel. So I think we're going to start looking at downsizing and trading in on our, our fifth wheel for oh uh, something smaller. And we're not quite sure what that is yet. So it's going to take a little time. So we'll be sharing that story with you as time goes on and I, you know whether we go to a, a class c or maybe even smaller to uh, um, a class b kind of tour van type thing i think that's a little small for us because you also got to keep in mind we got cinder our big dog but we're looking for you know the you know a rig where you're very comfortable you got all your stuff in it and it's comfortable for about a week and about after a week or so you want to get the heck out of it but for just you know week-long trips we don't need the big monstrous rv we have now and by the way if you're looking for an rv <laughs> give us a holler we have this big old montana which also has wi-fi ranger in it has a generator has uh solar in it and an uh, inverter and uh of course we in uh, um it's um probably going to be hard to sell so we'll see um i'm sure uh, there's always someone out there who's just looking for a rig like that but it's it's a beauty and it's in perfect condition it's gorgeous machine and it works you know nothing broken on or anything it's a great 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 rig but anyway <coughs> sorry i got the tickly throat thing going on today but anyway um uh yeah so uh, there's kind of these modified classes too that we're kind of interested in so as time goes on we'll start mentioning different models and, and things like that and love to hear your feedback on going to something a little smaller something easier to park easier to store um, I might even be able to get away with storing it here at the uh, at our house even though I got the boat stored here too and which also brings up the fact that Sherry and I also uh, are getting uh, starting to think about what you know what we're going to do with the boat which we're going to be taking up to lake powell again and i think we're going to probably take it up there in june so of course uh, before we do that just like fifth wheels and everything else 
Uh, we're going to have um, uh, one of our canvases replaced. And uh, remember, this is a uh, twin screw. So I'm actually going to have a mobile um, boat repair guy come to the house. <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, actually do an inspection, maybe change out the lubrications and stuff in the outdrives and stuff like that right at the house. So that'd be kind of nice. And he's a little backlog, which is no big deal because uh, we're not going to put the boat in the water till June. And then we'll probably leave it up at Lake Powell for about four months before the weather starts turning up there. And uh, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, um, don't let that area fool you. When winter comes up there, they get some serious cold weather and snow. So yeah, you want to get your boat out of there. And uh, of course, down here, it's like the perfect weather. So someday I'll keep the boat in the water all year round. But, um, you know, just like an RV, when you put a boat in the water, you got to pay for mortgage. And it's usually around an average of three fifty a month, plus or minus. And uh, so it is a little bit more affordable than an RV space. Um, but yeah, um, it, it's a cost factor and you got to keep that in mind when you own a boat or you own an RV. And, uh, when you sometimes like people down here in Arizona who have RVs can't necessarily park their RVs at their property like uh, we could. Uh, so then you got the storage costs for that. So you either we're storing the boat or we're storing the RV and we've got a cost for that. So, uh, that's costing us about $75 a month. So I guess no matter how you slice it, to have fun costs money. <laughs> it's just all it is. It doesn't matter if you're in a house, if you're just in an RV, have a boat, the toys cost money. So yeah, frustrating, but it's reality. This brings me to another story that I saw on Facebook and it was a gentleman I know and I can't remember their names nor can I remember the make and model of their RV. I read a lot of articles but the story was basically they're going down the road and some cars come driving up to him point to the back of the RV his fifth wheel saying pull over something's wrong back there. So he pulls over and found out that their water tank fell out and was dragging along the road and <clears throat> uh, basically what my understanding is they kind of ripped it out of there and had to stir it in the RV uh, to take it to wherever they were going and luckily where they were going was an RV park where they could use the um, public hookups so they still had water but their water tank was destroyed and uh, <clears throat> One of the things that's really frustrating I found uh, with RVing, especially when you're full timing, when you have something critical to be fixed and uh, a mobile RV guy can't necessarily fix it, um, most of them, some can, um, if you take your RV to an RV repair place like uh, let's say uh, Camping World, um, you may be required to leave your rig there. <clears throat> Now, luckily, some of these places, if you coordinate it properly, actually have space on their lot where you can actually stay on their property. And there's a few places that will let you do that. But a lot of cases you can or you just can't coordinate it or you're in a town that you, um, you, know, you may be in a whole other state and things are just not working out that way. Uh, can be really frustrating. So uh, definitely the description in the Facebook was saying, of course, there was like a month wait before they could even get their RV in for repair. And that could be really frustrating, especially when you come to places like Arizona as snowbirds and everybody's gotten issues going on with their RVs and stuff. And so um, the RV repair places can get quite backlogged. And, uh, and it's true, just like with my boat, I told you I was getting ready to get that kind of looked at. And of course, I'm probably not the only one starting to think about their boat this time of year. And so now they're getting backlogged. And uh, luckily, I'm starting early enough where I can wait a month before they work on it. And it's not going to hurt me. But pretty hard to do when you're living in your RV and that's your home. So uh, a word of warning, if you're becoming a full timer, if you can't 
fix some things yourself, which very understandable. And um, some mobile repair guys can do it, but can get a little pricey. Um, and of course, a lot of times, I think he was saying this guy, uh, his rig was fairly new or is under a warranty. So then you're forced to deal with the dealerships. And so then you have to work around their schedules and it can be quite frustrating. So anyway, my uh, my heart goes out to people and I, apparently this model of RV he had, um, another person I saw commented on this, uh, on that issue said that that particular model, uh, he uh, they had the same issue where they actually lost their water tank. So that's another thing to kind of pass on. <clears throat> when you're traveling, um, it is a, a very smart idea to try not to carry liquid in your tanks because it's very heavy and especially like gray tanks black tanks but and especially your water tanks you're talking about 40 or 50 gallons or more of water that's a lot of uh, stress to put on that tank uh, on that trailer when you're bouncing around so um, sometimes you get forced where you got to carry a little bit of water now this guy said he only had about a quarter tank of water in there um, but yeah but yeah it's always a good idea and to try not to travel with your tanks full because it's a lot of liquid and a lot of weight uh, on those tanks and depending on how well they've been uh, installed they could put a lot of pressure on the straps and the bolts and everything else so keep that in mind when you're traveling guys keep your tanks empty if you can but I know it's kind of hard to do especially if you're like getting ready to go boondock you want all your water tanks full before you get out there so um, tread lightly and go easy on your on your rig when you got your tanks full and uh, try not to be too abusive of hitting potholes and things like that if you can avoid it um, I just uh, can do a lot of damage and it could be a real pain in the you know what if you find your tank dragging along the road so another thing that came to mind that I, I, I keep trying to remember things that that we've noticed since we moved into a house from full-time RVing and I don't know if you've noticed this, but um, when you're in RV, you know, you always, you got all the same things you have in a house, but sometimes they are smaller. And one of the things I noticed that we couldn't buy fast enough was very large bowls. You ever notice that? Like the really good sized bowl where you could really fit a lot of popcorn in <laughs> or a giant salad when you have friends over and stuff. I didn't realize, you know, because we you know some of the stuff we had in the RV, we moved to the house. And it's like, I couldn't realize, I didn't realize how small a lot of our appliances and stuff were. And uh, when it came to dishes, that was probably the most amazing was, oh my gosh, we have nothing um, big. And when it came to glasses, uh, we only had a couple that, you know, when you're in an RV, you kind of utilize just four or something like that because of space um but as soon as you know we had like the kids or grandkids over is realize uh, we had to buy some full sets of things <laughs> so anyway what a shocker so yeah now we've got these giant bowls and every time i pull them out nobody's more thankful about something as stupid as a big bowl as me and Sherry, when it comes to making salads, like, uh, and I also just cooked a pulled pork, uh, um, about a five pounder or something like that. Once you, once you kind of pull that apart and stuff, you need a little bit of room. And, uh, so, um, anyway, I don't know if you ever noticed, especially in your RV, <laughs> take a look at the bowls you got. Uh, now there is exceptions. There's some RVs out there, especially fifth wheels that got enough space to hold on to big bowls, but, uh, I just felt that kind of humorous of uh, uh, you don't realize how compact you've made yourself sometimes until you get in back into a house or apartment and realize all your stuff is mini. <laughs> and that's okay. It was just kind of humorous. I wanted to pass that along. The other thing that came to mind is one of our listeners uh, shot me a note. It was kind of funny. He said, wow, you had a really good show, but you uh, you can't agree with all sides. <laughs> Of, of the issues it can't take a stance and it's one of those it's like well I mean when you do a show like this it's like when is you want to be open-minded because people have different perspectives of things and 
of course, you know, just because I'm a homeowner doesn't mean that everybody should be a homeowner. We can describe it and tell it all that stuff or a renter or something like that. And not everybody wants to be a full-time RVer and not everybody wants to uh, be in a fifth wheel. Some want to be in a motorhome. Some want to just have a Class C. Some people want to travel all the time and some people want to do work camping and some don't. Some want to just do it when they're retired. It's just so much. And so with a show like this, I mean, I, I, I think you need to be a little open-minded to all the different ways of doing it. Now, yes, we get opinionated and we do bring up sensitive things, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we're always uh, we're against it or anything. It's, it's being brought up for the conversation of uh, the different scenarios with RVing. So anyway, I do appreciate that note and I want... Um, and the person that I'm sure who's listening to the show today is, uh, um, I'm sure there'll be such subjects that come up that will take one side or the other. Uh, it would be kind of rare, but um, the big thing is we're trying to stay with the RV travels lifestyle and all the different types of lifestyles. So, um, you can't talk about all those different lifestyles if you're just set on one way to do it. So we try to be open-minded and we don't um, try to judge too much, um, but we do try to at least show an observation and stuff. So anyway, that's kind of our approach. But um, I'm sure you listen to the show for a while. You'll find certain times that we'll take a stance on certain certain things. But uh, And sometimes we might just do it to just kind of have a little fun with everybody. But uh, yeah, I uh, appreciate the comment. The next thing I wanted to share with you is when uh, Sherry and I went to visit uh, Mark and Jody over at um, the Lost Dutchman Park. One, and they said they were doing a lot of hiking. And there's some beautiful hiking trails, by the way. So if you're into hiking, boy, there's some great stuff. Now, the weather's starting to warm up here. So it's starting to hit the 80s and even hit the 90s last week. Uh, right now, it's still uh, just hovering around the 80s. So, of course, this time of year, our little critters start come out, especially like rattlesnakes. And rattlesnakes are um, uh, interesting little critters. They really don't want anything to do with you. Most of the time, a rattlesnake has a good warning system. And um, when you're hiking and stuff, uh, you also need to be kind of vigilant, just kind of keep scanning to see if one's in the trail or something like that and keep your ears open. But the big observation that Mark and Jody passed on to us was uh, pet owners. <laughs> he says, now they've been hiking and they actually have not seen any rattlesnakes. But uh, when we went to go visit them, we actually saw one that got ran over in the road. So they're there. There's no doubt they're there. Uh, but what they're, the observation was the, the I feel I'm going to, I guess here's my stand on something that'll make somebody mad, but uh, there's some really unresponsible pet owners out there. And they said that, that one is you should always try to keep your dog on a leash. There's certain circumstances where like up in Washington, you don't have the critters like you do down here. And a lot of times you can go to places in the woods where you can be along a river or something like that great time to let your dog go free and run and it's not bothering you're not in a park or something like that uh, but down here um, you know your dogs are just sniffing around and curious and they're just being dogs the problem is, is they're gonna go to the little hideaways where them rattlesnakes are hiding uh, when you're along a trail and there's enough trapping all that stuff they tend to kind of glide away they don't really hang out near the trails but your dog, they, they weave and out through the, those trails. And they're bound to run into them. And if they get bit, they're going to get bit right in the face. And uh, um, and it's not a real pretty sight. So anyway, I just want to put another emphasis out there, folks, that please, you got to be responsible with your pups. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I'm sure you appreciate your dog and they're part of your family. And I know you'd like to give them the freedom to run and all that stuff, but especially down here where we have our little critters, just not a good idea. And of course, you've heard me preach about making sure you get uh, the rattlesnake vaccine, uh, which will give your dog a chance if they do happen to get bit by one. 
but really guys um, you just I really would ask you to think twice about letting your dogs run free down here especially when the weather warms up there is a period of time down here where it's cool enough where you can uh, um, let them run a little bit um, but in a full-blown real desert land around here you really want to be careful because even when they go dormant they tend to go into little holes and stuff like that and if your dog gets a little too curious even a dormant um, a den could cause them a little issue so a little issue could kill your dog so anyway um, that was an observation that really surprised um, Jody and Mark and now they don't have they didn't have a dog they do have a beautiful uh, two cats I think they said they had um, but and they never let them out and we didn't let our cat out either but uh, yeah, guys, be responsible with them puppies, especially down here, oh, pup, just your dog in general. Down here, it's not so much that they should be on leashes and stuff, which we really do need to have. The other thing is making sure that uh, they stay away from them critters because they're down here. It's just because just you don't see them doesn't mean the dog won't find them. So yeah, please, people, take care of your puppies. So I, I have a question for some of you folks. Have, have, have any of you seen the show Big Time RV um, where <laughs> these couples come in they look at a couple of rigs and kind of describe what they want and at the end of the show they pick out the one they're going to buy. And I, I believe the two RV places that support this is the big one down in Tucson, Arizona and another one in Florida. And the show's called Big Time RV, which I believe is on the Travel Channel. And uh, uh, I, I, <laughs> I find that an amazing show. As I truly hope that people are looking at more than just two rigs before they buy a rig. Now, I'm assuming that they probably have. But when you watch the show, they come in and it's like they get to look at two, maybe three rigs. And then it sounds like they have to make a decision at the end of the show. And it's like, I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of feeling it has to do with, you know, it's just a show and it's not really exactly like that. Um, but yeah, the, uh, uh, I don't know, I just, I find it not real realistic because I, I do find that even when I've known RVs for a long, long time, I still look at a lot of RVs and I don't go to the same RV center. I may actually start, focusing on one particular model and then start shopping around at the dealerships and find out if I can get a better deal and even in some cases look at buying it out of state um, it's amazing how the prices fluctuate so I don't know I'd love to hear your feedback about anybody who's seen that show called Big Time RV and I think if you do a hashtag Big Time RV you actually can find it on Facebook but yeah I uh, uh, <laughs> I, I kind of binge watched it for uh, a day or two and uh, I just, I don't know, I, it was fun to watch, you know, the rigs and the description and the different people's reaction for why they want an RV, uh, but I didn't find it to be realistic as really as, um, maybe people do just go to one RV and just let the uh, salesman do all the work and then, and, um, at the end of the day he's like oh, i'll pick that one and pay the price but uh it just doesn't seem very realistic so i urge you that if you're looking for an rv do a lot of shopping and don't be afraid to look at a used one there's people that buy them and trade them in like almost every year take advantage of that and say uh, uh if you're going to buy an rv get one that's a year old and it all automatically could knock off ten twenty thousand dollars on the price and uh, uh, and still be able to get extended warranties on them and stuff. So something to consider. But And also look around to the different, even in the same state, go to different dealerships. You may be surprised at the variation in pricing. And um, so, yeah, uh, not to mention trade-ins too. Some places are more open to trade-ins than others and you might get a better price so yeah you might want to consider that but yeah but if you get a chance to watch on the travel channel big time rv it was kind of fun to watch i enjoyed it it's neat to see the variation of stuff 
I just don't find it to be realistic of what people should be doing, <laughs> should be doing when they're buying an RV. So anyway, I'd love to hear your comments on anybody that's seen that show about what you think about that big time RV show. So on Travel Channel. Yeah, let me know. And one more thing I got to make sure and mention that we're sponsored by goodmusicradio.com, which is a 24-7 internet radio station that we own. And uh, if you get the opportunity, check it out. You can download a free app to your uh, phone, which turns your phone into like a little radio. And basically it's uh, uh, past and present greatest hits. It's just good music, very little talk. And uh, I'm pretty sure you enjoy it. And what's really neat about it, as long as you can get internet, you can listen to it anywhere you go. So you can listen to it on your cell phone, your PC, um, you can even play it on your Echo. In fact, if you look in their descriptions, you'll see what the call sign is for your Echo, and it works just fine. The other thing I wanted to mention is uh, I still, many people have, and I, I constantly run into people that don't know how to listen to podcasts. And uh, a lot of them would just go directly, like some people just use our uh, uh, YouTube and they just listen to it through the vi video version. But if you don't know, I'm just going to remind you one more time that on your cell phone, you can download a free app. Just go to your uh, uh, Google Play stuff and uh, download the one we use is called Podcast Addict. And it's absolutely free. You just download it for free. And then you go into the search section. Make sure it's searching uh, iTunes or and basically you just type in what shows you're looking for or at least what subject and shows will come up like we have two podcasts which is the rv talk radio and that pulls up very easily and then our newer show which is called arizona talk radio that's a podcast that we have now and uh very easy to use and what's nice about a podcast as you can tell these usually last about uh just short of an hour and you don't have to listen to it all at once. You can just, uh, and that's kind of why we kind of break our show up into modules. Is you, I, they're each module's about 10 to 15 minutes apart. And you can just listen to that particular part, especially if it's like lunchtime or something like that. Pause it and your software kind of keeps track of where you were. So you can just get through the show. You can take all week. And so you don't have to be in a hurry. And that's the really nice thing about podcasts. And the other thing, of course, is if you have other hobbies like hunting and fishing and boating and uh, sewing or quilting or whatever you like to do, uh, different kinds of arts, all, it just goes on and on. Uh, financial, whatever you like, there's a podcast about it. You can guarantee it. There's all kinds of podcasts out there. So uh, not only if you enjoy RVing or if you like um, Arizona living type of shows or things like that or um, it can i'm sure there's something for every state so uh and i'm sure country too <laughs> so anyway if you get the opportunity download a free app to your cell phone listen to podcasts it's a wonderful way to relax put on your um, earbuds and kick back and listen to some of your favorite podcasts and hopefully we're one of them and for a final note, I also wanted to bring up something kind of personal that I found out just the other day that actually has been going on for about a month. But um, when you get my age, everybody's got their little health issues and stuff like that. Mine is diverticulitis, which is just uh, a minor form of, you know, it could be like um, Crohn's and things like that. But uh, mine acts up every once in a while, which is just really a lot of cramping and uncomfortableness and, of course, what goes with that. Anyway, but uh, I noticed, um, I don't know, a few months ago, I was having more spells. And so it can be really miserable, you know, it's like all of a sudden it's like you're in the middle of Home Depot and it's like, uh, dear, I got to go for a walk. <laughs> and and then it could happen like several times in that day. And it's very uncomfortable and cramping and the whole works. And, and, you know, we all have our issues. So that's not the point. But what I wanted to point out is, that, you know, I keep asking myself, is it something I'm eating or is it what's, you know, you're always going to have a few spells, but is there something that's triggering it? And so you always try to, maybe it's milk, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. Well, um, 
somewhere along the line, I was watching the news the other day and someone was saying that um, uh, PM, you know, the little PMs, the Tylenol PMs or Advil PMs or whatever, I'm not sure which chemical it is that's in those, can be um, irritate the liver and even damage the liver. So that got me to think is because we take those every night for, you know, years. And so I kind of like, you know, I'm getting at that age. I, uh, I'm i kind of worried about that statement. Maybe I'm going to try not to take those for a while. So I quit taking PMs at night. And uh, uh, I, I, and I have taken uh, z -Quel, which is a liquid form type thing. And I'm not having trouble with Ever since I stopped that about a month and a half ago, oh my God, <laughs> it's like, a miracle. I was like, I've been looking for years trying to figure out what's been kind of causing me to have, you know, big spells where it goes on day after day and stuff like that. And it's like, I could never put my finger on it. And it's finally, I quit taking PMs and it's like, I've got my life back. Um, a simple little thing like that. So what I'm just passing on is is I'm far from a medical expert or anything like that. But I do know a lot of people uh, take PMs and things like that to help kind of get to sleep at night, especially working folks and all that stuff. So may I suggest if you're having some uh, issues at all, that especially if it's um, uh, gut related, uh, that could be your culprit. Anyway, so check it out. Like stop taking them for a week or so and see if you start feeling better. Now, um, uh, I still have, you know, occasionally discomforts and stuff like that. Just very rare. But um, gosh, it seemed like it'd be like two or three times a week uh, where it's really uncomfortable and stuff. And, and it's such a miracle to me that I just wanted to pass it on that. Uh, I know a lot of people take PMs at night um, to just help sleep a little bit. And uh, apparently those can be kind of rough on some people. So uh, if I help one person out there that uh, might be having some, uh, you know, when you get in your 50s, you know, the plumbing is always a little bit of an issue. Um, more so for some than others. Um, but you know, uh, the liver and that area and stuff is affected by taking PMs and stuff. You might want to just stop, see if it helps your issues at all, and then find an alternative. Like me, it's been the z -Qual, and it seems to be working just fine. But, uh, anyway, th to me, that was just a big, big hurdle, big thing that really uh, has made my life a little bit easier. And what I have is mild compared to what some people may have Crohn's disease. And uh, there's other forms of diverticulitis and stuff out there too. And so, uh, yeah, thought I'd pass that on. I just think it's important enough to discuss. So uh, anyway, um, you know, health is always something that we don't talk about enough on this show. And, uh, of course, just the RVing lifestyle and things like that is all part of health too, of um, traveling and doing things for yourself that gives you a good peace of mind and teaching you how to live for the now. Those at least mentally are health, healthy for good living and, and a solid, um, <laughs> good help with sleeping and stuff like that. And being active is another thing that helps with sleeping and all that stuff. So um, that's not so far-fetched to talk about stuff like that on this show. Um, RV travel is... Um, you know, we talk about lifestyle and why do people do it? And a lot of people is like, well, the gal, the hustle and bustle of things and stress and all that stuff. Um, uh, it can help and probably improve some people's uh, health issues. Um, and then other issues that come up from traveling, which sometimes gets worse, is if you have any kind of... Uh, if you're you know, allergic to anything or maybe you have asthma and things like that, different regions are better for that kind of uh, issue. And so I don't know what all those areas are. You know, Some areas are more dustier than others. Others have more pollen, things like that. So it's a good subject to bring up. And, and if you have comments of things that have helped your health pertaining to RVing or um, habits that you've had, um, or discovered 
uh, doing RV travel or anything like that that you could pass on that might help someone else. Um, like I said, well, none of us are doctors or anything, but um, anytime we can help each other live healthier lives and feel better, uh, is I think is a really important thing to pass on. So yeah, there you go. Well, it's that time again at the end of the show here. We're kind of wrapping her up. I want to thank everybody that we got to uh, talk to this week. Uh, I want to take uh, the time to say thank you to Mark and Jody Shetler for uh, spending time with us and letting us uh, uh, visit with them. We had a great time with them. Great people. And I hope they have a safe trip to the East Coast. And um, they uh, start sharing a lot of their stories with us, too. And we, uh, that was great. And um, I urge you, if you get a chance on the Travel Channel, check out Big Time RV. That was kind of interesting to watch. And, uh, of course, um, we'd love to hear comments from you for things that <laughs> kind of, things that make you feel like, yep, you know you're an RVer when. <laughs> you know what I mean. So, anyway, uh, it's been great. We're really glad to be back uh, doing our episodes again. Uh, we uh, will be shopping for actually a smaller RV, so we'll be sharing that story with us on a personal note. At the same time, uh, feel free to shoot us notes. Don't forget we have a Facebook page uh, for RV Talk Radio and RV Travel Buddy. Either one of those you can leave messages on or write stories for. We also have a group um, Facebook page that you uh, feel free to, uh, to share your stories on. And, uh, yeah, so lots of stuff out there. So uh, we do appreciate um, all the support and all the nice uh, comments we get. So anyway, I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. Thank you very much for listening. Stay in your RV and most of all, be safe. Talk to you next week. Bye now. Thank you for listening to RV Talk Radio. Please take the time to subscribe to our podcast and to our YouTube channel, and watch some of our previous shows. Thanks for listening. Bye now.